Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my SQL Lite video tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about joins, triggers. I'm going to give you a brand new real world example. I'm going to provide a review for everything we've covered in all the previous parts. And on top of that, I structured this so I'll be able to answer all of the questions that I've been getting lately on SQL Lite. So I have a massive amount to do. So let's get into it. One thing that seems to really be confusing people about SQLite is how it handles data types because it is kind of strange. There's basically four types of data. There's text, there's blobs, integers, and reals. Text, very easy to understand, it's just a string of characters. A blob is data that is stored exactly as it is entered, and I'm going to show you here in a second exactly how they work. Integers, of course, are numbers without decimals, and reals are numbers with decimals. If you would want to store a Boolean inside of SQLite, it's actually going to be stored as an integer, and dates and times can actually be stored as text, real, or integer formats. And you can see here an example of what those dates and times would look like if they were stored as text. And this is the most common way to store dates and times. And then you have the extremely odd way of storing dates and times if you store them as a real data type. And then you have still a little bit weird, but not quite so weird way of storing dates and times if you store them as integers. Now we get to the part that confuses people a little bit. When you are creating your tables inside of SQLite, you can actually enter the data type as any of these different data types. You just have to understand that they ultimately are going to be converted into text, blob, integer, numeric, which is technically kind of an integer, or a real data type. So it's convenient to use these data types whenever you're entering in your tables. Just understand that, for example, if you would put in a length restriction for your text that you're going to be entering into SQLite, those length restrictions are going to be completely ignored. But it is nice that you can use them just so you don't have to change the way that you create your tables. Blobs are created whenever a data type is considered a blob or defined as a blob or if no data type is specified at all. And then here's all the different types of integers. And then you have numerics, which are technically integers. And if you would create a decimal data type such as this, or a Boolean, or a date, or date time, of course, date and date times fit into numerics. This is ultimately what all these different types are going to be transferred into inside of SQLite. So enough with the presentation format. Let's look at some diagrams. Now in this tutorial, I wanted to give you another example that was very, very easy to use. So I'm going to use the standard way of teaching SQL by creating a student database. So you can see right here I define student and you can also see right here where we have six and I have defined one character. Remember this is going to be ignored but we have it in there just for the heck of it. Well as you saw previously there are no enumerator types inside of SQLite. So we're going to actually have to create an outside table, which is fine. And whenever we do that, our sex ID, which is normally a number, our primary key is actually going to be text, which is going to stand for either male or female. And then aside from name, each student's going to have an ID number and everything else is going to be built inside of other tables in our database. Then we come down into the test part and the test is going to be very simple. It's going to have a date. It's going to have a test type which is actually going to be either a quiz or a test. And you can see that I define those over here, much as I define sex up above. And then each one of the tests is gonna have a test ID. Then if we come down here to test score, you're gonna see that our primary key for test ID up here is going to be defined inside of the test score table. And then also student ID, which is going to come up here from our student table is also going to be defined down in there. And then ultimately we're gonna have our score. And the only other thing we're going to have inside of here is absence, and it's going to have student ID and date, and it's also going to link up to the student table. And later on, I'm actually going to create a log table that is going to store in absences and when retests were taken, but I'll leave that for later on in the tutorial. So now that I covered that, let's go create our database. Okay, so here I am in the terminal, and I'm going to go in here and actually create a new student database pretty simple. And then I'm going to just start creating my tables. So like you saw before, we're going to create a table and it is going to be called sex type, which is going to be male or female. And we're going to have sex ID text. Remember, this is going to stand in for an enumeration type, primary key, not null. And then we're going to have sex type integer and close that off. So there is how we're going to create our sex type table. So while we're here, we might as well go in here and actually insert all the different things, the only things we're going to ever put inside of here. So we're just going to go sex type, sex ID, sex type, and then values. And then after that, we're going to put in male, one, just like that, enter. And then I'm going to cheat and come in here and go female, two, 
and there we go and that is the only thing we'll ever put in our sex type table so now let's create our student so we're going to go create table student and everything I'm typing here is going to be saved and there's going to be a link to it in the description for the video so you can look at it if you really want to learn this stuff you should do that and here I'm going to show you that we can use these different data types they're just going to be ignored not in all just remember that variable character here is going to be treated as text and the 23 is going to be ignored inside of SQLite then we're going to go sex and then this is going to be a character and we can put in one there if we want to no and this is actually going to come from this guy up here that's where that's from and then we're going to put ID number and it's going to be an integer and it's going to be a primary key that is going to stand for every student that is ever created And you have to be really careful whenever you're putting these commas in here because for some reason on occasion you'll miss putting a comma inside of here when you're creating a table and SQLite will not catch it so that's really funky and weird and then I'm going to create a foreign key reference to sex because we have to do that so we're going to say sex which is this guy in this table and then we're going to say references and we're going to reference the table and the specific ID inside of it that we want to link and a foreign key is just a link to another key in another table that's all it is it just helps us reference data so let's clear that scroll back and let's create another enumeration type that's going to represent the types of different tests that we're going to have, either quizzes or tests. So we're going to go create table, test type, and we're going to go test ID, primary key, not null, just like before. And then we're going to have test type, and it's going to be an integer. There we go, that's defined. And then just like we did before, we're going to go insert into test type, test ID, and test type. And the values we're going to put inside of there, of course, Q for quiz and then bounce this up here and T for test two and there we are so there we go we have all those created well, let's go if we want to look at our tables there you can see all of our different tables and I'm gonna change my mode here to columns now that I'm thinking about that and I'm also going to turn my headers to on and then I could do like a real quick check to see that everything is working there test type and there you can see they are working all right good clear the scroll back again now we're going to create an, another table, and this is going to be the test table. And I'm going to go date, and I can define this as a date type. Remember, there is no such thing. Then we're going to say type of test, and it's going to be text, not null, test ID, integer primary key, auto increment, so we won't have to put anything in there. And then we're going to define a reference, a foreign key reference, to, and we're going to say type test inside of here is either going to be Q or T. And we're going to do that just like we did before by pointing a reference test ID. Boom. Whoops. Messed up. And the reason why that got screwy is because I didn't come in here and type in test. So, sorry about that. And then we're going to have our date. And then we're going to have our type of test. And then we're going to have test ID. And then finally foreign key. Like that, like that, and like that. Boom. Done. Tables. Now we're going to come in here. I'm going to clear the scroll back again and create another table. And this one is going to have a bunch of foreign keys inside of it. And this is going to be test score. And it's going to have a student ID, integer, not null. It's going to have a test ID, again, integer, not null. As you can see, I'm not using the fancy data types anymore because there's really no point in doing it. Integer, not null. And then define ourselves some foreign keys. So we're going to say that test ID is going to be referencing the table test and then test ID specifically inside of the table test, foreign key, and then this one's going to be student ID, references, the student table, and ID number inside of the student table. And then after that, if we would like to do a composite primary key, which is going to combine two different pieces of data inside of our table and use that as a primary key, you can do that. You just go primary key, and I'm gonna say I wanna use test ID and student ID to create that composite primary key. And there we go, we have that created. And then finally, we have to create our absence table inside of here. And it's just going to have student ID, integer, not null. It's going to have a date for the date of the absence, not null. It's going to have a primary key again, which is going to be made up from a composite using both the student ID and the date. And then it's also going to have a foreign key that is going to reference the student ID which is going to reference this student table and specifically ID number inside of it. 
and there we go. So there are all of our tables that we're going to use for our database. Now I need to insert values into the student database so we can get this thing going. And if I want to look at this real quick, let's just go Shima and student. And there you can see our table that we used for our student database. And then if I want to insert values into all of these, I'm just going to do it this way. We're just going to go insert into student. And of course, you just have to define name and sex. And the ID number is going to auto increment for us. We don't need to worry about that. And then we're just going to put in those specific values. So Sally is going to go into name and F is going to go into sex. And then Mark's going to go into name and male's going to go into sex. And if we hit that, all those are in there. And then we can just come in here real quick, select everything from student, boom. And there's all of our information all sat in there. So that's cool. All right. So now that we have that all set up, I'm going to go in and insert values into my test area. And this time I'm just going to do it because it's not going to be anything complicated. So I'm going to say insert into, not that that was complicated, but it was a lot of typing. Then we're going to say values. Now, if you want to put a date inside of this, pretty simple. You're just going to say date, just like we covered last time, now. And that is going to be that. And I'm going to show you in a second how to enter a date whenever it isn't now. And this is going to be our quiz data type. And then we're going to say one. And this is going to be for the primary key. Now, if it was set up for auto increment, you could just put null inside of there. But whatever, that works as well. And there we go. We have that all set up. And here is the design for the test table. And there you can see there is date and there is date and there is Q for test type. And then we have test ID, which is right there. And that's the primary key. And like I said, I could have put null inside of there. And since this is auto increment, it would have added it, but whatever, save some time. Okay. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to clear the scroll back again, is I'm going to be working with a couple different data types here all at the same time. I'm going to start off first here with test score. So let's go schema test score. There we go. And there's everything. Now for all of these different students, I'm going to say insert into test score. And I can put in here values. I don't have to put in where they're supposed to go if I put everything in. And I'm going to say one, which is going to represent my student ID. And then I'm going to put one in here again for the test ID because we only have one test. And then I'm going to put in the score for that said student. And there we go. And there we are. Do exactly the same thing for another student. And then we get in a situation where we have an absence. Well, with an absence, I'm going to say that we're going to say insert into test score values. And with this guy, I'm going to say it's the third student or the student with the ID three. This is still test one. And then inside of here, I'm going to put negative one. And that's going to be able to allow me to find it later on whenever the student comes in and we have to do a retest. And other than that, we're just going to enter in all the rest of them and hit enter just like before. Now we come to a situation where we have to fill in and actually document that that one student was absent. So we're going to say, well, let's go in here again, schema and absence. And there is my data. And then if I want to enter in my information for the absence, I'm going to say values and I'm going to say three. And let's say that the student was absent today. So you know how to do that. You're just going to go now, just like that. And there's nothing else that we need to do except spell values, right? And there we go. Now we have that absence set. Now, if we want to come in here and create ourselves a brand new test, I'm actually going to cycle back through this. So where did we get to the part where we actually created the test? And there that is. And you can see right here exactly how to enter a date if you want to enter it in in a very specific way rather than just having it get the current date and putting that information in there. And here we're going to create the test type test and it's also going to have an identification number of two. Again, to save ourselves some time, I'm just going to have all those insert statements go in there for the test data type and all the students. And you can see right here are the students that were absent and with the negative ones right here for the test. And there we go. And that's all fixed. Here, once again, we're going to come in and we're going to enter in all of our absences. And there we go. And now, since we have all of that information in there, let's start issuing some select queries so we can actually pull some information out of our database. So something that might be useful for us to do is to be able to show test results for students that took a certain quiz on a certain date. So we're actually going to use two tables in this situation. We're going to be using the test table, and we are also going to be using the test score table. And there you can see all that information. So from this, we're going to grab a student ID. We're going to grab a score. We're going to grab the type of test. And then finally, we're going to grab the date. So how do we grab all this information from multiple different tables? Well, we're going to use something called a join. 
So we're going to say select just like always exactly what we're going to get. And we don't have to define table names before these guys because there is only one student ID whenever you combine both of these tables. And then we're going to say score. Then we're going to say type of test. And then we're going to say date. So that's all the information we want. Then we're going to say from, and we're going to define both of the tables we want to join together. And then we're going to define some limits here. So we're going to say that we want the date for the quizzes that are going to show up to be from 2013-06-09. And we want to also say that we want the test ID in the one table. And this is how you reference a specific column inside of a specific table, just like that is equal to test score dot test underscore id and there you can see all of that information we can also see our absence that is right there that's very useful and you can also see exactly what happens if you don't come in here and make sure that we match up these two tables using test ids that are both in each of them you get this long table nothing's joined together and it is quite a mess because it doesn't know how to properly group this information we'll get more into that here in a second now what we're going to do is do another select and in this one what we're going to do is print out the students names with the scores just like before we're also going to print out the type of test and date but because we want the name and not the student id that means we're going to have to bring in the student table to grab that information and then what you're going to need to do to avoid having a mess you're going to just like before we're going to have to match student ids for tables in both test score and inside of the student table and just like before this is going to allow us to show the test score that corresponds with each individual student and not just dump out everything in a mess and we're just going to say name score type of test and date that's what we want and then if we want it from three tables, it doesn't matter. Put as many in there as you want. And then we're going to say student to find a condition in which our date is going to be 2013-06-09. And then here we're going to say and the test test underscore ID is going to be equal to the test score dot test ID. And we're also going to define the test score dot student id and join those two tables based off of this common piece of data that they both have which is a identification number for each student and there you can see there is all of our information that we need so that's how you combine three different tables and how you join them up using these conditions in which we're matching up test and test score by showing that they both have the same test id and we're matching up test score and student by showing that they both have the same student identification. So now we get into a little bit crazier stuff here. Let's say we would like to list all of our students along with the total number of absences that they have accrued. Well, to do that, we're going to say select name. And then just to remind you, if you want to use a different description for the column name, you just use the word as. And then we're going to count all of our absences date. And then we're going to say as again as absences and we're going to pull all this information from both the student table and the absence table and we're going to define that we want absence student id to equal student id number now because this is an aggregate query what we're going to have to do is define exactly how we want to group our data and how we specifically want it to be displayed on a screen and what makes sense to me is because we're trying to get at number of absences based off of students we're going to group that data based off of student ids so just makes sense and then in essence what we're doing here is calculating the number of absences for each identification number and how you group them is just grow group by and I'm just gonna say ID number hit enter and there we go there is our whole entire list of absences well it's early in the school year so each one of them only has one but let's say that we'd want to come in here and say list every single student name and even if they had zero absences we want to list the fact that they had zero absences just so we can track all of our students at once 
Well, I'm going to use different types of joins here just to show you a bunch of different types of joins to describe exactly how you do that. Now, above what we've been using with the commas is what is called an inner join. And there's another way to define an inner join here, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Now, in fact, the inner join is the most common join that you're ever going to see. And specifically, what they do or what the inner join does is it returns only those records that match within our table or the two tables that you're going to join. And you can also come in here and say, for example, name score test ID from test score, and then type in join instead of a comma if you so wish, and student. But then you're going to come in here and say on student ID equal to ID number, right like that. And there you can see is all that information in regards to names and test scores and so forth and so on. So that is how you would do an inner join in a different way. Now we get back to exactly how we would show the number of absences even in the situation in which a student doesn't have an absence of any type. And to do that, what we're going to do is use what is called a left join. Now how a left join differs from a regular inner join is a left join says that we need a row for each piece of data that is listed on the left side of the join. Or the table that is on the left side of the two words left join. So here we're going to say select name as name just like we did before and then we're also going to say count absence date and then we're going to say as absences just to do it. Then we're going to define where we want to get our information from. So we're going to say from student that is going to make sure that we get all of the student information to display since it's on the left side. We're going to say left join and that information is going to show up whether those students have a absence or they don't have an absence. And then I'm going to say on absence dot student ID is equal to the student dot ID number and it doesn't matter in which order you put these. This absence student ID equals student ID number doesn't matter. And then we're going to say just like we did before group by ID number and I slipped up just like before make sure we put our commas inside of there very important on and group by. And there you can see all of the student names are now listed whether they had an absence or not. So that's pretty cool and that's one way to use left join. Then you have natural joins which are kind of similar to a left join except what it's going to do is return all columns that match in both tables. And let's just do something here. Normally you can get by just by using regular old joins and left joins but I'll show you what this is. Score. And you should go in here and play around with this information inside of a database to really learn and figure out exactly how this stuff works. Then we're going to say from student and then we're going to say natural join with test score. And then we're going to say where student ID is equal to ID number blah 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 blah. And you can see there is a whole bunch of information in regards to tests on all of the different test types. So there's test one, there's test two, and all the different tests. So that's an example of a natural inner join. Like I said, go play with this information. I don't want to cover it to death. And then you have something you're never even going to probably ever use, what's called a cross inner join or a Cartesian join. What this does is it combines all the records from two, two different tables, and it can make quite a mess. So let's say you want to go test ID from student. Then you're going to say cross join, just so you know what this looks like. Score, like that. And there you can see, see it prints out quite a mess and it's what it's doing is it's printing out test scores for every single test and it's combining too much information. Like I said, it's something you're not going to probably ever use and it's probably something you should avoid. Then finally, I know that I talked on different functions that are available in SQLite, but I don't think I really gave some great real world examples. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you exactly how to find the best and worst scores on all the quizzes and all the tests. And this is a comment sure I covered this before. I'm going to just bring it, come in here briefly and show you the table and the table data that is inside of it. So inside of test score we have student ID and we have test ID and we also have score and we're going to be using that and we're also going to be using the test table and it's going to have a date inside of it. It's also going to have a type of test inside of it and it's also going to have a test ID inside of it. And then finally we're going to have the student table and it is going to give us our name, it's going to give us our sex, and it's going to give us an ID number. So those are going to be all the tables that we're going to use to create a list of the best and worst on all of the different quizzes and tests that have been taken. So what we're going to do is we're going to say select and we're going to say to test 
date and let's just go and cover a whole bunch of things here let's say that we want to change the column name for date make sure you put that column in there don't be silly like me then if we want the minimum test score what we're going to do is say test score inside of min and we're going to say score and we're going to type in as worst put that comma in there and then we're going to go in and say max and we're going to say that we want the maximum test score and we're going to define that as best and then we're going to say that we want all this information from the test score and the test table and we're going to specifically say where test score dot test underscore id is equal to test table dot test underscore id and then we're going to say on top of that we want to group by date and there you can see actually it's going to come up negative one as worst that's to stand for absences and so forth but if you had this set up and everybody in the class had taken the test of course it's going to show the lowest grade there and here it's going to show the best grade and all of that information is going to be sorted based off the fact that we defined to group everything based off of the test date now if we wanted to come in here again and say print the average score on each of the tests how you would do that is go select we're going to say test date as date and we can say average and inside of this we're going to say that we want to get the average test score and we are going to call this average score remember if it's going to be two words you need to put commas around it and then we're going to say from test score and the test table and then we got to define that we want to make sure that the test score test id is going to match with our test test id and we want to once again group all of these guys by test date and if we do that you can see the average score on each of the tests and then if we would want to come in here i'm going to clear the scroll back and list all the students that had a test score over 40 for example to bring in the students into this equation because they're important we're going to say name and we're going to say test score and since there's more than one score inside of these tables we're going to do that i'm going to say from test score and from the student table and here we're going to define that we want results for test scores that are greater than 40 and test score dot student id equal to student dot id number and then on top of that we want to make sure that we group by name and there we go you can see all of the different students that scored over 40 on a test so another thing we can do is we can actually put select clauses or select statements inside of select statements so let's say we just wanted to get the number of students that scored over 40 the number the count well we could actually come in here and go select count and go name and let's just say we want to type in as and then scored over 40 and we're going to say from the student table then we're going to say where we're actually going to use the exact select clause that we used previously remember it just printed out names and their score which was quite useful well, what we can do is we can then say how many student names are in your previous select clause that you used so here we're going to say like this and then what i'm going to do is I'm going to actually paste in the select clause. This is what we just used to print out the names and the test scores, except I'm going to put them inside of there, and it's going to match up and count all the matching names in the student table that are also in this list of students that had a score over 40. And there you can see, it just says 5. See? Pretty cool. So that's one another way to grab information and use it. Pretty cool. And then another thing we have inside here, I mean, I'm covering everything in this tutorial. I don't know how many people are actually watching it at this point. I'm going to show you how to make a view. And what a view is, is it's a way to store query results. But it isn't going to be part of the schema, and it's not going to be a table. It's But it's, it's just going to be a quick way to store a query that you're planning on issuing over and over and over again. So let's say that we think that we're going to want to use the query for gathering the number of scores over 40 all the time. Well, how you create a view is you go create view and you go score. You can give it any name you want, obviously, over 40. And then you're going to say as, and then you're going to put in your query that you want to store inside of here. This is very useful. So we're going to say test score, put the score inside of there from the test score table and the student table where test score dot score is greater than 40 and test score dot student id is equal to student dot id number and then we're going to say group by name whoops 
type that in a wrong no big deal come in here real quick type in student again group by and there you go it's created and actually it will show up if you go to tables see score over 40 shows up right there and then what you're going to be able to do is actually go in there and execute that anytime you want and you could for example use it in place of the code itself so that's pretty cool now we get into triggers now again, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of exactly what a trigger is. And if you would want to drop that view, for example, we can just go drop view, score over 40, like that, and it's not going to be there anymore. Just in case you want to know how to do that, see, it's gone. So now let's get into triggers. Now what triggers are, are there operations that are going to automatically be performed whenever a specific event occurs that you define? So we're going to actually use a couple different tables here. We're going to use the test table. And we're going to be grabbing information from date, type of test, and the test ID. Also going to be using test score. And we're specifically going to want the student ID, the test ID, and the score. And we're also going to be using the student. And we got name, and we have sex, and we have ID number inside of there. And I do that all the time whenever I'm using this. Okay, now what we're going to do is create a table that is going to be used as a log and I'm actually going to call it log. And what it's going to do is it's going to log all of the students that are going to need to be go in and create or make or take a makeup test. So I'm going to put inside of here ID integer and this is going to be a primary key and the test ID be important if we're doing makeup tests, we want to know what that is. We'd like to put a date inside of here. The student ID would also be very helpful and that's going to be an integer and it's going to be not null as well. And then we're going to reference foreign keys, foreign key, test ID, test score, test ID. And then we'll come in here and create another foreign key. And this one is going to be the student ID. And it is going to go into test score. Also match student ID like that. Close that off. And there is our log table. Now what we're going to do is create our trigger. So how you do that is just go create trigger. Then you're going to say test. I'm going to give it the name test score update and what it's going to do is it's going to say anytime the score table is updated what I want it to do is go into the log table and confirm when the makeup test was taken. So create trigger the name of the trigger then we're going to say after the update is finished this is very important of the table score and specifically on test score anytime a test score is changed this would also keep students from cheating if they got a hold of the table and they didn't know about the log because they'd go in there and change their test score and it would go into the log table kind of cool so anytime inside of the table score test score specifically is changed we want to this trigger to occur and what's going to occur then is we're going to say insert into our log table test id and date and student ID you know, grabbing information just like always values and then you can either put in old dot and the information you want to put in or new dot the information you want to put in I'm gonna say new you're not gonna reference tables here you're gonna reference either old or new okay that confuses people as well and I'm gonna say new test ID and date which is gonna be now which is when the retest is being taken and then I'm gonna say new I also want the student ID and you can put any type of query inside here you want. Just make sure you don't reference tables here, you reference new or old. Those are the only options. And then after you got that all set up, you're going to go end. There that is. Clear the scroll back. Now let's say we want to come in here and get everything from absences. There we are. And then we want to specifically update test score inside of here and we want to set the score equal to 20. And we want to say where test ID is equal to 2 and student ID is equal to 9, which means we're going to be changing this guy right here. Enter. And then if we come in here and change like that, you're going to see that that was updated in the log. So there was an absolute ton of information on SQLite. Up next, I'm going to be showing you how to use SQLite inside of Android. If anybody hung around to watch this extremely long tutorial, I'd love you to leave a comment below to tell me you did that. And please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.